let me do a series on what it means to be a trend following boron. And we're on part five. I'll probably need to go ahead and wrap this up because a lot of the stuff is the same exact stuff that I preach. And I guess being a trend following boron, that makes sense. But as some of these examples come up, I want to kind of bring them to your attention. And one of them, and this is one I think I've mentioned already, is that the TFM doesn't seek themes. He lets themes find him. And, and as, as a, for instance, when Academy IPO, and I didn't, I didn't take the buy at B signal, but I took the first setup there because I felt like as a trend following moron, I had to. And I thought it was a stupid idea because how can a brick and mortar retailer make it in this day and age? Well, it turns out everybody wanted kayaks and stuff like that to go get out of the house. Okay. <laughs> because everybody was cooped up, and that worked out. It was a coal company years ago, one of our biggest winners. It went up like 600%, stopped out, I think, three or 400%. But at one point, it was up five or 600%. And I had no idea, and, and I don't know what the theme turned out to be. Maybe it was the, and I'm not being political, but maybe it was that the, the demand for the electricity to power the electric cars, but they needed to burn more coal. I don't know. <laughs> Don't want to get caught in those conversations. Anyway, you can see this uh, this stock bottomed out. Nothing to do there. This is a pot stock, uh, canopy growth. And then it really began to take off, and it caught my eye when it pulled back. And then also other pot stocks were taking off and pulling back. And I wasn't like, ooh, pot stock, so pot's going to do this or pot's going to do that. But I was like, you know, it's a setup. So I took it, and we had a 78% move just the other day. Now, this is straight from the trading service. And I didn't know it was going to go up 78%, but I just followed along like a TFM. Entry was here, stop was down there, and the IPT was here. Unfortunately, it's hit, it's it's come right back in and hit the mechanical stop. I did use a little discretion and stick with it. And I'll show you what I did and some of the reasoning behind what I did next week. And We'll see how it works. When you use a little discretion, you're not throwing caution to the wind, but you might give a position a little bit more wiggle room. So in this particular case, even if I stopped out at a little bit lower level, I'd still be at a profit in the second loaf of those shares. Okay. <laughs> prior to teaching the TFM, prior to learning the TFM, I was just the M. Yeah, well, you know what? Sometimes we... Um, we all feel like the M, just the M. I felt like a genius on Tuesday, and I got my ass handed to me yesterday. So <laughs> I'll get to that in one second. Now, the TFM lets the market make decisions for him. So just because I had the chart ready to go, you can put in a stop entry order. Like sometimes I'll put in a stop order to enter stock, and I'll forget that I put it in. Well, entered it, and then I'll go to lunch or whatever, come back from lunch. I'm like, oh, I'm long this stock. I didn't realize it even triggered. So you can let that mark, let the market make your decisions for you. Because the more decisions you have to make, especially the heat of battle, the tougher it's going to be. Now, I don't always use hard stops, but you could put a hard stop in too. And that's especially if I need to trade out of something, I don't just wait for the thing to bounce and get out of it. I say, okay, it looks like it's kind of bottoming out a little bit. But I put my uncle point in, okay? Just like, and I don't know how it didn't get hit, but like two days ago, the CGC, my stop was at 20 cents, 1020, and it went to 1021. And I could, could have very easily, you know, noise alone, obviously, or a little bit more noise could have taken me out. But I did, have, I did eventually put a hard stop in because I didn't want to, the problem is, let's say you got it. Say, okay, I'm gonna get it at 1020. It goes to 1015. Okay, well, maybe I would just give it to 1010. And before you know it, all of a sudden it blows through that, and, and then you're going further and further down. And I'll show you the example of of how that can happen in just one second. So it's a very dangerous thing to do. But if you put that hard stop in, the great thing is the market will make that decision for you. Now the IPT was here. And you could put in a limit order, okay? And I actually, and unfortunately, I preach using these uh, automated trailing stops when you're trying to exit half, but I was a little skittish, and maybe I was influenced by the fact that this position was kind of all over the place, even though it looks like it just went straight up. 
but it was kind of all over the place to get there. So I just put in a limit order and I got my IPT out at the limit. But if a stock is running, you might put in an automated trailing stop and intraday, it'll automatically trail that stop up for you. Those things can be wonderful. You got to be careful with them, obviously, like everything else, because you can get a spike and then get stopped out. But if you're trying to squeeze out some extra profits, let's say in this case, we're looking for 1130 and all of a sudden it's at 12. Well, you might put in a half a point or even a point, depending on how far it goes, trailing stop. And then at the end of the day, you get out half of your shares if you're not stopped out. And sometimes you can squeeze out an extra couple of points in a, in a stock, especially something that's running up 78% in one day. Now, this doesn't always happen, obviously. I wish it did. <laughs> um, but it can, okay? It can occasionally happen. And, and you never know. The trend following moron never knows which stock is going to be the next big winner. I, I'm i hesitant to say which one it is, but recently I picked the stock and I said, this thing's a winner. I am 100% convinced it will be a winner. And it's been choppy, choppy, choppy. And finally today, it's like back in the black again. I'm like, okay, you know, you're not going to disappoint. But I don't always have that strong feeling when I'm looking at something. I'm like, okay, it looks good. Let's just see what happens. And sometimes to my surprise, one will take off that I wasn't maybe quite as sure about as another, but all the all the pieces sort of fit. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, CGC was a bottle rocket. A bottle rocket is when you have a, a stock that just goes straight up and then comes right back down. And that can be a bit of a bummer. It's okay if you're long, but unfortunately, you start counting your chickens like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to be up another 78%. <laughs> Counting the chickens, I'm I, I've got three. <laughs> My wife wanted chickens, so we got chickens. We had chickens in the country. They're a lot of fun. They really are. But uh, we got a lot of trees in the backyard. A lot of hawks smelling those chickens. So every day, all day long, I'm counting my chickens, literally. Now, one thing I want to make sure I mention is that the TFM doesn't trade when the risks are seemingly small. Trade not to lose. And and I actually. Truth be told, occasionally might be guilty of such behavior on intraday trades and like try to catch these intraday reversals, which is bad behavior. And I realize that. And this is why I, I, I'm confessing publicly. And I, I actually put in my trading journal, TNTL, trading not to lose. But as a general statement or not a general statement, as a rule, you don't want to trade not to lose. You want to trade when you think the odds are potentially great. You want to get in a stock that's a little bit more volatile within reason, that has nice orderly pattern, nice clean pullback, and you think that stock has a potential to double or triple or more from where you get in. That's what you want to do. You don't want to get in like, well, I'm just going to risk a little bit and see what happens. Okay, that's a that's a bad thing to do. Guilty often of doing that. I never say never, but I don't think I'd ever do that on a daily chart. So you only want to trade when the, when the opportunities are potentially great. As uh, those of you who know me, we call that the F yeah trade. If you're looking at a market, you're not feeling F yeah, then pass. It's like all day long today. I was just kind of, eh, the market's all chopping around and all. I just couldn't could get into it. And I found myself getting sucked into a couple of small trades and they didn't work out. It's like, you know, Dave, Trust your gut, trust your instinct, or just look at the charts and see that everything's chopping around, especially the day after a crazy Fed day. Let this thing settle out a little bit for the intraday stuff, at least. With the position stuff, it's a little bit more cut and dry as to what you should do. Follow along. Anyway, you want to make sure you're trading when opportunities are great. You don't come in and say, well, look at this stock. It's pretty low. It's the lowest it's been in months, years, whatever. I'm just gonna buy it. I'm gonna put a stop right below the low. What's the worst could happen? Well, you think you're only risking this much, but all of a sudden, let's say that stop got hit like right there. You're like, well, let me just see what happens. And then all of a sudden you get a day like that, like that, where it begins to implode in earnest. And then maybe you get this one little bounce say, Well, maybe I'll hang on before you know it, you're in a lot more trouble than you thought you would be. Okay. Now, if a market is breaking out intraday or something and you want to 
go in and take a stab and put a tight stop in right below that breakout. That's a little bit different story. That's not exactly trading not to lose. But if you're watching an ETF bang out new lows and just because it's low, you think you want to pile in for a day trade, that's a bad idea. Now, this is one that we could go on and on and on for weeks. And this is why I'm probably going to have to wrap up this series this week and work on something else. Because as you know, we've... <laughs> Brian, I've never done that. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I always, I'm always, uh, I'm good friends with one of you guys. Who are, it, it, I'll just say, uh, I'll say something. It, it's like said, no trader ever. <laughs> we're all guilty of these behaviors. It's just, we need you to learn from them and make sure we don't do them again. I think uh, Livermore said that the guy who never made a mistake would own the world in a month. And the guy who never learned from his mistakes would never own a blessed thing. But yeah, I make a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes yesterday. I did some stupid stuff. And, and you know, we're never immune, and that's why you have to be constantly be on guard. And by the way, one thing that I thought was 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 interesting, I think I learned it from Scott Adams' book, but I seem to have learned it on my own too, is that discipline gets used up. Okay. And so I sat here all day long, and finally around two o'clock my time, an hour before the close, I just felt like I had to do something. I just can't just sit here all day. Yes, you can. You know, and the, the the position trading, I can go weeks and sometimes months without a new position without a problem because I've done that for years and years and years. And that's what I do. But this intraday stuff, if I'm sitting there looking at a screen, if I'm not careful. I'm going to feed that slot machine, as Dakota calls. It's like having a slot machine on your desk. Right. But anyway, the, the battle is is definitely within. And that's kind of a, a Jesse Livermore quote too. was it Pogo? We met the enemy and he is us. Extraneous influences, this is a big psychological thing when it comes to trading. And I don't see a lot of other people talk about this. And this is why I beat the dead horse so much. When you go to make that trade, you're not just making that trade in a vacuum. You've got a lot of baggage that comes with it, okay? You could have a, a fight with your spouse or your significant other or both. If you have a fight with both, you probably shouldn't be trading. If you have both, you might not be, <laughs> be trading. Uh, needing money, having money. Okay. I had one of my biggest days ever, or one of the biggest days ever, I think, on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, I had one of my worst days. So it's like, and that's because I had all this money. I'm Dave Landry. Okay. And I was a little full of myself and I got my ass handed to me like I should have. Okay. It's like, it's like Joe Pesci, my cousin Vinny, I could use a good ass weapon. Well, I needed one and I got one. Uh, needing money. We all need money. It's like everything's so friggin' expensive now. It's 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 uh, scary if you think about the, the just the money that's going out and you're trying to replace that money that's going out. You could have a recent string of losses that makes you scared to take the next trade, even though it's the most beautiful trade you've seen, even though it's a, like an F yeah setup. Uh, a big update. That's that's guilty this week. Uh, as I said, I used to, and I say this every week, I know it, but it's just to show you how the battles within and these extraneous things could really mess you up. I couldn't figure out why I was losing money every time I walk in the office and make trades. And before you know it, I'd be I'd, I'd be down and, and stopping out on the intraday stuff at least. And then it, I realized that, wait a minute, I was a little sugar low when I left the office and everything looked like shit. And when I came back feeling good with a with a full belly, it's like everything looked great. And that's the uh, hangry judge effect. <laughs> it's like, you know, I didn't, I stopped trading when I walked in the office. It's just like, if, by the way, if you don't know why you're doing something, write it down, write it down, write it down. Geez, I seem to make stupid trades every time I walk in the office. So I'm going to at least have a little pause next time I walk in the office before I make any stupid trades. And I'm going to write WITO, walk in the office. I'm a trading journal. And that's going to give me a little bit of a pause. And from a neurological standpoint, you don't need a whole lot of pause to stop from doing impulsive things. Okay. Anyway, so the Ys, W Y. W H Y S may be revealed at a later date. You just have to stop the bleeding if there's something that's going wrong. And then later on, you'll become W I S E to the Y. It's like, why am I doing that? Oh, now I know. 
because I just had breakfast or I just had lunch or I just had a snack and now I'm feeling good. So it has nothing to do with the market and separating extraneous is tough, but it's like right before you click into that trade, you need to think what's going on in my head, what's happening. The, the other thing you need to do is you need to write three handwritten pages every day when you first wake up. I've told everybody this, I don't think anybody does it. If anybody here does it tonight, let me know, I'll be impressed. It's one of the hardest things you'll ever do, but it goes actually pretty quickly now. And, and believe it or not, as I've said a thousand times, I actually look forward to waking up and writing. And it's actually one of the things that gets me out of bed. Now, just, and I say in more recent times, it was about 12 years ago where uh, Denise Scholl was speaking before me and she talked a lot about neurology and trading and I never thought about the neurology. And since then I read several books on neurology and specifically neurology and trading. If you go to davelearn.com slash books dash two dash read, you can get a list of those. But one thing that, that I found interesting and this was outside of trading, I learned this from a neurological standpoint. And this is what creates gambles ruin, by the way. And uh, losses suck, they really suck. And I, and I don't, I know you don't need me to tell you that, but what's interesting is it's two times. And some people say, one of you guys, I forget which one, um, might, have been, might be you, John, said that it's like more like 10 times, but I know it's a lot more from an emotional impact standpoint. So let's just go with two. So when you have a losing trade, it's twice the emotional impact as a winning trade. Now I'll tell you something else from my learnings in psychology or readings in psychology and, and, and neurology and all. It's like an observation or talking about something will stress you out. Like my wife, will, oh, it's going to cost $2,000 to get a car repair. It's like, okay, well, just get it, get it done. You know, it's like, okay, $2,000. Okay, I'll live with that, whatever. And then later on that night, oh, it's going to be two thousand dollars. It's like oh, so I got to keep reliving that over and over again. When I have a losing trade, I keep looking at it all day long, and every observation becomes a double whammy or twice is hard or twice the emotional. I mean, they've measured this, so it's true from a neurological standpoint. You can't escape this, but every time you you look at a stupid losing trade especially if you're supposed to be out of that trade, right? It just creates more and more animosity inside your head. So, you know, let's just say you're you're batting, what's that, 500 would be 50%? So 50% win rate, if you're position trading, is actually pretty good. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but it's pretty good. But let's say... You're doing that, and so plus one on a winning trade, minus two on a losing trade, and maybe even more if you're watching it until it stops out. Then plus one and minus two, you add all that up, and it's it's a it's a net negative. And and that's part of the gambler gambler's ruin is once you start going down, they start chasing that high, and that high is really hard to get. They get a little winning hit, okay, there it is, you know, and then and then they get bam, they get slammed down again. So it's a really it's really a dangerous thing if you think about it, and it does apply to trading.